story of peace and light. Amen. They saw their punishment 
as God has in them. If there were obedient to the commandments and statutes and ordinances, they would be found to be in the right. When your children ask you in time to come, what is the meaning of the decrees and the statutes and the ordinances that the Lord or God has commanded you? What will we say to our children? What is our story as a Christian family? How has God been present in all the ups and downs of our lives? Or have we stopped telling our children stories? When I was a child and the electricity went out, that signaled storytelling time. My grandmas were from St. Anne, and invariably, we would hear another chapter of their lives as children and how they came to Kingston. We heard how they would climb trees, cut cane and cooking bush, feed and tie up animals before running the many miles to school, and they dared not be late. They were not rich, but they shared what they had with other members of the community. Knowledge, a meal, simple things that enriched the lives of others. The story about the right living, we heard that every day. It was how they lived and what they wished us to follow. According to Stanley Harawas in his book, A Community of Character, the most important social task of the Christian community is that it is capable of hearing the story of God we find in the scripture and living in a manner that is faithful to that story. He used an engaging story about rabbits to illustrate the demise of communities that failed to pass on their stories. We are told of the adventures of a group of rabbits who decided to leave an established warren called Sandalford because a rabbit named Fiverr, who had the gift of sight, had received a premonition that the warren was about to be destroyed. Although he could not read it, he saw a sign which indicated that the land was about to be sold for housing development. He was convinced that the warren was he attempted to tell the chief rabbi the prayer, but of course, who would believe such a tale when everything is going well? Only a few rabbits believed the story and left Sandalford to journey into the great unknown. They encountered strangers and learned to rely on each other's strengths as they negotiated the dangers in their, their environment as only wild rabbits could, with speed, cunning, and trickery. They interpreted their experiences through the stories of El Arreo, the prince of the rabbits. According to Harawas, good and just societies require a narrative which helps them know the truth about existence and fight the constant temptation to self-deception. He explained that self-absorption is training in self-deception, and deception becomes the breeding ground of injustice as we focus on ourselves and turn a blind eye to the aspects of our social order that places on equal burden on others. We pretend that bad things happen only to other people. They cannot touch us. The story of the rabbits included an encounter with a nameless warren where everyone did as they pleased. The rabbits were big and had lost their ability to sense danger. They knew something was wrong with their community as members consistently disappeared, but they never asked what had happened. They invited strangers to stay at their warren in the hope that it would be the stranger who would be taken next and not them. They were being fattened up by a man who 
would remove our luggage whenever he wanted one to eat. But does that story sound familiar to us? How many of our people have gone missing? How many of our children? Yet we never hear the follow-up of whether they have been found, and we never ask. They have been reported, and then we forget them because they are not ours. Now we have an understanding that some of our children have been trafficked for prostitution and drug running. It is easy to distance ourselves. We tell ourselves they are not our children. Our children don't get into that kind of trouble. We fail to report what we know to be abuse and other crimes against children, all because we do not want to get involved. But it is only a matter of time before our children are next, before they are the next to rapid to take on. And the trouble is at our doorstep. And someone else will be saying, I do not want to get involved. It is not my child. Self-absorption leads to self-deception. And deception leads to injustice. We have been challenged by Jesus to live our lives together by trusting in truth and love and to banish the fears that create enmity and discord. Who is truth? Who is love? Who should we trust to banish our fears? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In today's Gospel reading from St. John chapter 14, Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus banished the fears of the disciples who reflected on his words after his death and resurrection. Their teacher was no longer physically with them to hold them together as a group, but the story of salvation which they believed held them together. Instead of an attitude of each man for himself, they prepared for the next stage of their journey as the witnesses of the story of God's faithfulness. They had no need for self-absorption and fear because they believed the story of Jesus Christ. What about us? How faithful have we been to the story of Jesus Christ? Do we even believe it? It is our common belief that is holding us together as a Christian community. Is it that we are relying on Sunday school and the church to tell the story of salvation and have stopped telling our children the story of Christ at home? If that is the case, even if that forms an important part of our story, the story of the decline of the weakness of the church in the world. Because if we cannot start in our own homes, how are we going to engage others? As our children wrestle with the conflict of the truth of things being measurable, testable, and observable, and the Christian story which only offers God's love through Christ's sacrificial action, which is not measurable, testable, or observable by any scale or skill that humans have devised. Our children are left looking for a story that will make all the pieces fit. What will we tell them? It is here that our stories help our children to make sense of the impossible. We are called to tell our children how we did it, how we were able to discern where one story ended and the other began, how we imputed the beginning to God, the middle to the human use of what God has given, and the end 
Father being what we see today. How it is God who gives knowledge and that we use God's gift for teaching, healing, and the advancement of our community. Because of our faith in the Christian story, we hold to the truth that throughout each phase, God has been at work directing each process and outcome. If we fail to tell our children the Christian story and fail to bear witness to the continued truth contained in it, as we discern God working in and through the minute details of our experiences, they will turn to others for their explanation. They will hear the very plausible story that point them to being their own God, that they can be self-centered and selfish as they want to be because no one else matters. They are the center of the universe and all else revolves around them. Others are to be exploited because they have a lot No one gets ahead by being nice. And of course, everybody wants to be at the head of the pack. But friends, sometimes our children do not hear those stories from strangers. Sometimes they hear them from us as our actions speak louder than our words. When your children ask you in time to come, what is the meaning of the decrees and the statutes and the ordinances that the Lord our God has commanded you? What will we say to our children? The Israelites told the truth that they had not always been faithful to God, but had fallen away time after time, and that God had remained faithful. God went for them and brought them back into covenant relationship every single time. Stanley Horowitz insists that we must tell the truth. No society can be just or good that is built on falsehood. We must tell of our own unfaithfulness, that we are grateful for God's gift of confession and absolution, which helped to put us back on the way of life. In that story, our children will learn how to get back on track when they fall off. They would know that as a people forgiven by God, that we can do no less than to pick them up when they fall. They would never feel hopeless because they would know that we love them. We are called to tell our children the truth today. God loves them and so do we. We will celebrate with them and cry with them, but we will never give up on them. We have a duty to pass on to our children the story of God's love for us as we continue to discern God's loving action in our lives. Let us continue to bear witness to the story of God's faithful love for us to the world so that they can come to the truth as well. We have a message to give to the nation that the Lord who reigneth above hath sent us his Son to save us and assure us that God is love. Amen. <laughs>